the goal. It could be too far. No, he's thinking. Oh, what a catch! It puts a spicy forehand out in front of Naomi Morsilla. Woo for the win in Canada. Darren Woo! Santos with the layout grab. Oh, that fantastic grab. The claws of Chapa. Canada just became the world champions. Canada and the rest of the world. You're listening to the Hakane Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Theo Wan, currently in Toronto, Ontario. And I'm Danny Proby, currently in Brampton, Ontario. And we are your Ontario podcast, all about Canadian Ultimate. We're both in Ontario. That is actually pretty fun that we are in the same province. Uh, we may or may not have seen each other recently. Yeah. Can never get those days back in my life. <laughs> no, that. So, for those that don't know, um, Danny coached in a tournament recently. I was commentating at said tournament, uh, USD1 College Nationals. And then we did a little mini road trip, which you might have seen on our Instagram page, which you, if you don't follow, you should. So, uh, we spent uh, how many hours together, Danny, total? I kind of blacked the whole thing out. Oh, so. Tough, tough. <laughs> Yeah. A couple of days yeah, in a car, um, doing stuff together. We had Emily Marshall with us. We'll talk about it in the subs only, a little bit more in detail, but it was actually a good time, and Theo and I did not want to murder each other that I know of. Yes, no, no murdering took place. Um, we went to some American staples, which I particularly enjoyed, but once again, that's subs, that's subs only. Oh, right. Okay. I don't want to give away too much, but yeah, thanks anyways, everyone for the questions. Um, got a lot more questions than we were expecting and they ranged from our thoughts on things about college to dating life to <laughs> June. There are a lot of junior questions. We appreciated that. People wanted us to compare junior teams that we haven't seen yet this year to each other a lot. So we just kind of stopped answering those ones. But anyway, I digress. Yeah, that was a fun time. We'll have to do that again soon. I don't know when, but um, we got a lot to talk about because last week when we did our NAS preview, we didn't really talk news. So we're going to jump to news right now because there's a lot going on. We now have breaking news. We'll start with news uh, in my neck of the woods, Ontario. And uh, OFSA happened. I still think it's very backwards that high school Nats happens before provincial tournaments and literally makes no sense. But anywho, uh, the top seeds, your familiar names here, Adam Scott and Bowmanville, as well as North Toronto and Castlebrook secondary out of your neck of the woods. Currently Brampton go three and oh, um, big shout out to Markville secondary because they were the 14 seed overall and came, um, two and one in pool play and they were seeded last in their pool. So that's always super fun. And also super fun when two, three seeds in the pool, Port Colburn and Sandwich Secondary um, go two and one and like kind of give themselves a good pre quarter spot. Um, in pre quarters, everything goes chalk except for this Havergale, which is a women's um, school, and Crescent, which is a boys only school combined team. So there's a lot of like frisbee pedigree with that school. I believe Brito Santos is their coach. Um, Carla DiFilippo teaches there, and Crescent has produced um, some people uh, that you might have known as well um, that played for Queens, etc. Anywho, quarters go to the top, top four seeds, so it goes chalky chalk, and then, you know, this is my favorite, Adam Scott and Bowmanville rematch. Um, it, uh, it wasn't an 8-0, or what was it, 11-0 um, half or, or run that Adam Scott had earlier. Um, this time, Adam Scott wins again, so Adam Scott, congratulations, uh, you win 7-2 here, and... You know, this is really cool because you win um, also last year, go to your first Nationals and win that, and then you win this offset again. So this is hashtag Dynasty Alert out here for this team from uh, Peterborough, and uh, we're hoping to see them, you know, produce some kids in the juniors and then club. So uh, congrats to you, Adam Scott, uh, the Lions, uh, national and provincial, national champions first, then provincial. Congrats. Okay. Very cool. Very cool for that team to be able to win both. I, my attention was, got got a little distracted when you said sandwich secondary. That is a, I'm not, I'm not making that up. That's a real school. 
It's called Sandwich Secondary. Yeah, Sandwich Secondary School. I'm going to look up exactly where they are on this planet. And also, like, what their mascot is. Wait, did you look it up? What is it? No, but, like, it, it has to be, like, a sandwich, right? It's like, a team in Windsor, which actually we drove by. They're So they're the Sandwich Secondary Sabres. The, uh, there's so many. That's a missed opportunity. There's so many sandwich things that could have been. Well, Pickles. Just, tomatoes. That, that would be a terrible mascot. BLT. Sandwich scary. The sandwich secondary BLTs take nationals. That'd be sick. Right? There's so many. Okay. I'm going to call their, their school admin um, after this. But yeah, I do think it is weird that nationals comes first. I understand like logistically, that's just kind of how it has to go down. It's just, it's just Frisbee being Frisbee and being funny is all. Yeah. Different governing bodies too. So yeah. I think that, that plays a role. But um, speaking of different governing bodies, we're going to go, uh, what is this? BC school sports. Is that the organization? Yeah, so for those of you that don't know, BC School Sports is the sport organization that organizes every all the main sports in, in British Columbia. And Ultimate wasn't recognized by this association until a few years ago. And so once it did get recognized, quite a few things kind of had to change. We, The ways that we were doing things in BC didn't happen that way anymore. And there were proper zones and proper bids from regions of where there were no ultimate teams ever. And then all of a sudden there was less lower mainland teams making interprovincials. So it kind of got all a little wacky, but it did hashtag legitimize ultimate. And a lot of these schools, now that it is a BC school sports, we see teams from other regions actually becoming legitimate. So it's interesting. They played this game, this tournament rather on the Thursday and the Friday, and then the BC ultimate provincials so it's tier two seniors tier one and tier two juniors so that's like the bc ultimate invite that's what provincials used to be that was still held on the saturday and the sunday so i'm going to talk through the bc school sports one just quickly so basically there are 16 teams that made it into double a bc school sports in the quarterfinals we ended up having grand forks who i believe won last year versus vancouver christian and semis and vancouver christian won by one Stratford Hall versus STMC. Oh, actually, no, maybe STMC won last year. I actually don't remember. I know those two teams were in the finals. So, and then STMC was there to face Vancouver Christian in semis, or sorry, in finals. And then STMC won. I believe STM usually wins. And in the past, they used to pr- actually play with the kind of bigger AAA schools. Um, and then Grand Forks ended up taking third place. So if you don't know Grand Forks is, welcome to the rest of the world that doesn't know where Grand Forks is. It's like a pretty small community. It's really amazing. They got a great ultimate kind of vibe going there. So it's cool to kind of see their teams kind of popping through. Now in the Triple A BC School Sports, there's a bit of drama with this tournament. So when these teams do zones, like there's not enough bids for how good some of these zones are. So if then Fraser North, for example, the lower mainland, these regions or these zones have so many teams with storied histories that win provincials, that win tournaments, that sometimes because of like luck of the draw or having like a bad game, don't make it into like the quote unquote real provincials. So Burnaby Mountain and North, because they like lost games to Heritage Woods in league play, they ended up playing each other for the final bid in our zone or in that zone, which was like unfortunate because both teams definitely deserve to go all three, like three, there should be three bids in that region. from my opinion, or zone rather. And so there's no, like, you know, in college when there's games to go, Theo, there's like, you, you play a game to go. And then, then that's the game to go. It's not like you play semis and like the losers both drop out of it or something like that. Like this is different. Like, out of pool play, there was no actual like full crossover for for bids. So Burnaby and North Mountain ended up being on the outs. Burnaby North and Heritage made it in. Churchill won cities. So they beat Hamburg. They beat all of these other teams. They won cities for the first time in a while, I believe. There's big hype on it. And then they lose in the game to go to the game to go, I believe, in zones. So they don't even make it to provincials. They win the hardest city in the province. And then they don't make it to provincials. It's wild. Things are wild. So BC School Sports is good for the legitimacy, but it does kind of mean that some teams coming into this tournament are not super strong. It is great for the development of the league in general. So 
Hamburg came in, sorry, Hansworth came in as your number one seed, Hamburg number two seed. Hamburg was kind of like world domination last year. Heritage Woods coming in the three, Chaos South Cam was coming in the four. Um, pretty good tournament. It was fun to follow along. At our semifinals, we had Burnaby North overtaking Hansworth eight to seven. That was a come from behind win. I think Burnaby North might have been down by like even three and ended up winning that game. And on the other side, we had Delta and Heritage Woods. It's just, that's just a semifinal you never would have expected to hear even three years ago. So it's really cool. Delta ended up winning that game 10 8. And so it was Burnaby North and Delta 12 9. Burnaby North took home the championship of BC School Sport Provincials, like legit quote unquote provincials. Uh, first time a Burnaby team's ever won. So pretty cool. Moving on to junior tier one. So this is like when it's the weekend and it's BC, BC Ultimate running it, not BC School Sports. Templeton junior team ended up winning. They have the Bell Twins. So Jeff Bell's kids are just like gunslingers on that team. Um, a kid named Callahan, who's Griffin's brother, who came on the podcast with the Prime Penguins. So they have a pretty good squad of, of good throwers. So it's no surprise to me that they won. Um, yeah, in the senior tier two... There were 32 teams playing in this division and lots were waitlisted. So that just kind of gives you an idea of how many teams exist in the Vancouver, the great, like lower mainland area. Um, but it ended up being Burnaby Mountain, Argyle, Guilford Park, and Queen Elizabeth in semis. Burnaby Mountain ended up winning their game. Queen Elizabeth ended up winning their game. And Queen Elizabeth ended up winning the whole thing overall. So congratulations to Queen Elizabeth for winning tier two provincials in BC. It's very cool. It's cool because if you look at like the top five teams that finish out of tier two, it's like Surrey, Burnaby, North End, Vancouver, um, Elphinstone coming at number eight for Gifsons. It's, it's just nice to see teams from other places. Um, I do want to shout out South Kamloops and Kelowna in general, because I think they've been sending really strong squads. And like they only beat, they almost beat Burnaby Mountain, or sorry, Burnaby North, for example, in BC School Sports. So whatever the folks are doing up there in South Kamloops, keep it up. You're crushing it. I mean, a lot to break down in this. Uh, thing. I tried to go quickly because there's like a lot. No, I know. Well, well, I just want to say like that the fact that there's so many teams playing in BC and like some that couldn't get in, that's super cool. Um, hopefully, other provinces can kind of continue to generate the buzz of Frisbee. Uh, second of all, Jeff Bell, I know, is a, a, a passionate listener. Love that your kids are slinging <laughs> out there. And, and a kid named Callahan, is that real? Like, a kid is actually named Callahan? Yeah. I mean, his dad plays Frisbee. Oh, my gosh. I need to name my kid Cal. Uh, like, that's... Imagine you just named your kid after Frisbee terms. Yeah. Like, one of your Very kids' good. just name is Oyo because, of the you know, that's, like, the new throw. So, it's just Oyo Juan. There's a dog, like a frisbee dog named Scoober, which I think is pretty cute. Yeah, I'm not, definitely not naming. I mean, I could see. Uh, what was that new last name again? Well, it hasn't been fully announced, but Nicobe. So Scoober Nicobe is like a badass name, is all I'm saying. Like that that person is going to be like an, an elite athlete. <laughs> like Scoober Nicobe. That's all I'm saying. Anyways, congrats to the BC teams. Um, if there's other provincial tournaments happening, just like just give us a shout um, and we'll uh, be sure to talk about it. Um, so we're going to move on to, to club. We're kind of jumping all over the place in news. Uh, within the time that we recorded last time, Sixers roster came out. Um, so obviously an elite women's team um, did very well at US, U.S. Uh, club Nats. But uh, their roster, Danny, missing a few people, huh? Missing, missing some uh, notable names. Yeah, it's funny because when I looked at their roster, I, I didn't necessarily notice that right away. I was just like, oh, cool. I usually look at the new additions to see kind of what juniors are kind of squeaking in or seeing if people were from incognito or kind of were kind of breaking into that that team. Um, so I didn't necessarily notice until somebody told me. But yeah, a lot of World Games players not playing this year. And you said that they're just not playing. They're not playing somewhere else, right? Uh, that I know of. I mean... Things could change, but right now there's no Molly Lewis, Hannah Dawson, Lauren Kamira, or Laura Kinoshita listed on their roster. So that's something to keep an eye on. Sweet roster graphic, uh, by the way. Uh, I believe Crystal DeSantos made that. I like the Pokemon theme. Yeah, they always slay the social media game, in my opinion. But uh, notable additions, Monica Wang, TC, U24, mixed player, goaded in the air. Jocelyn Lee, Hakane, D1 Women's Offensive Player of the Year. 
We love to see it. We love to see the kind of infusion of young blood on these teams. It's good times. Yeah, young blood, young blood. I mean, there's there's young blood and old blood in this next announcement, which is um, <laughs> TC Canada Beach rosters out here. So I know there's like grandmasters and stuff. So um, we're not going to give you all the rosters because that, that would just be ridiculous. So you can go to Ultimate Canada's website, look up the rosters. I did hear from a birdie that uh, you are on one of the rosters. I'm on the mixed team again, so I'm hoping, praying, wishing, thinking that it will happen this year because I think beach is really fun and it, it really suits my style of play. So, yeah, my, my team has a lot of Quebec players, so I keep calling us Team Quebec, which I'm, like, vibing with and try to learn some French in the off season. I mean, you and me both, I need to, I need to do the same here. Um, along with Ultimate Canada stuff, All-Star Game, we missed that announcement, obviously, because we recorded a quick one last time. Uh, U24 Women's versus this like all-star group of like club players that uh, is playing in the uh, fish fishbowl again. Bigger time, bigger fishbowl this year. Uh, Josie Gibbard and Carla DiFilippo, your coaches, and you can get tickets. I think that's really important. So if you want to support Frisbee, uh, specifically Women's Ultimate, you need to get your tickets out there if you live in Ottawa. Like that's call the arms out there. I am itching to see what this all-star roster looks like it would be so fun for those players to be able to play it'll be kind of like a little mini adult in canada uh yeah i just post it so i can look at it and we can talk about it and in other u24 news the u24 open team is kind of created a tournament called border bash and it's just where the vancouver teams end up playing i guess soccer comes up so it's the battle of the border so furious black fish sockeye and most importantly richard and associates will be in attendance so if you don't know who richard and associates are i think it's a play on richie and friends slash some like rock fight vibes in there as well so uh, i'm a big fan of richard and associates they they get to scrimmage against ubc and traffic a lot to try to make our zone a, a little bit better um it's gonna be fun i think there's gonna be a couple repeat games so i believe furious may be playing sockeye and u24 twice i like that i like that they're going to be around the whole weekend. So if you want to watch some high level men's ultimate open ultimate, go check out the U24 border bash. It's on Instagram. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Yeah. We had talked about um, every team kind of getting opportunities to play tournaments. So uh, the open team getting able to do that. I hope, I hope Sockeye brings like kind of a full roster. Um, I know it's early season for them, but uh, really give the, these uh, U24 men a, a challenge here. Uh, and just really push them because that will help them uh, further on uh, when it comes to July. So, yeah, super exciting there. Uh, a tournament did happen um, recently in Quebec. So Frisbee Fest, kind of like FQU, which is the the federation there, um, starting like an early season tournament. So we'll start in Mixed. Um, so Mixed is interesting because Crank, this is their first tournament. They kind of have some, add some additions. You know, I got to keep my eyes out for them. So... Um, they win the whole thing. Uh, they defeat Cold in the finals, 11-8. And Cold uh, is a team that went to Masters Worlds, correct? Yes. Um, and then there is also a team, Pandemonium, that is a new mixed Masters team in Ottawa, and they um, finished third. So um, a couple teams that were Nationals-level teams last year were there, so... Uh, Quest and Harfang were also participating in this tournament. So it's a good um, first result for Crank. Um, they obviously don't play any of the Ontario mixed teams, but they're able to take down the, the Quebec sides to win. Uh, so they'll be at Touring Tune Up in a couple weeks, uh, which is like a big turn, well, bigger tournament for all the Ontario teams, except for Union. I think Union's not going, but um, that'll be a good test for them to see how they do with the rest of Ontario. Uh, moving on to open Ensom. Come on, they're the legends. Um, do you know what Ensom stands for? I do not. Um, it stands for nothing sexier than old Montrealers. So um uh, Ensom, love the name. They got Ensom GM, they got Ensom open. Um, they win the whole thing. Uh they defeat Quake 10-8. Quake, I'm su still high up on. Uh, I think you really uh folks should watch out for Quake. Um definitely a quarters level team in nationals and beyond. So uh, I know they added some reinforcements this offseason. Out and Magma were also teams that played in Nationals that were also at this tournament. Out finished fifth. Um, and then in women's, there was like a round robin. So Cube, who finished second at CUC, 
2022, took home the whole tournament. They went 6-0. and Venus, who finished fourth at Nationals last year, went 5-1. and And then there was a three-way tie with Kezar, EXO out of Sherbrooke, and Vintage, uh, Women's Masters team, with Kezar coming in third. So kind of what we said about Tux, like early results, you got to take them with a grain of salt. Like teams kind of maneuvering some things. It's early, still kind of early season. Heading in court to a little bit towards mid-season in June, and then eventually regionals in July. So um, some results out there for you. Um, you know, I, I kind of wish I played in, in Quebec. That was one of my the things I thought about doing. But, you know, the stuff happens. So Quebec tournament, it's over. Early season. They have more tournaments coming up. Um, Jazz Fest will be ramping up the corner uh, next weekend as well, which I will be at. So I'm excited for that. Very exciting. Okay, we're going to continue on with our kind of talk of U24s. I know we are kind of like skipped a little bit, but U24 Mix is going to be attending a tournament this weekend in Devons, Massachusetts, along with Crash, Red Fox, Spawn, and Flans on Rose, which is really cool. Like I actually didn't know that this many Canadian yeah. teams went to this tournament. I know that Union used to go um, and everything, but it's, it's nice to kind of see some Canadian representation. So right now, Crash is seated just ahead of TC because of their uni win at Tux. And I have heard that some of the top American teams have not finished their tryout process. So take the, the results with a grain of salt when you see them kind of coming in. Um, and how the, the elite bracket works, and I probably the classic bracket as well, where if you win your pool, you play a crossover with another number one seed, and all the number one seeds move on to quarters. And then all the two threes cross over with another two three. And the winners of that move on to quarters and the losers drop down. So if you finish fourth in your seed, you unfortunately do not have a chance at quarters. Everybody else plays a crossover game on Saturday to determine the quarterfinal matchups on the Sunday. So it should be a good event. Not much to super say. I don't know a lot about these teams in most of these divisions. It's a very big tournament. I'm quite excited because we have hotels a literally two-minute walk away from the fields, which is great. I was talking about this with the Alter World team. Devons, Massachusetts, those fields are iconic because many upsets have happened there at regionals. So you as a West Coaster don't understand how iconic these like fields at Devons, like many cool things have happened at this tournament or sorry, at this field complex. So super exciting. Um, Red Fox, you got slow in your pool. So, ooh, like that's kind of fun. Like spicy. Red Fox, the 14th, the slow one. You have, or U24s, they got spawn. Uh, Spawn just missed out on the semis last year. They lost in quarters uh, to Danger Noodle at Canadian Nationals. So they're playing as well. And then I guess they have a 15-seat open, which is kind of interesting. But Crash, I want to talk about them very briefly. On their USAU roster, they only have 12 players listed. So I'm going to wish you the best of luck because it's a long tournament and you only got 12 players. Yeah, there's been a lot of issues with rostering, to be honest. So I wouldn't be surprised if they have a fuller team once oh. they get there. Like it's been it's been really complicated working with both the Buddha website and the USAU website. They uh, don't always agree. Okay, well, insight. Maybe crash. You have like 25 players going, and they're just not listed. So maybe uh, Flams on Rose. You're in the the classic pool there. So uh, good luck. I don't know if I don't think classic can cross over to elite. So that's unfortunate because I know that happened last year with like Manic when they went to a tournament at Boston Invite. They were in the classic and they couldn't like they won classic and they crushed everyone. Uh, and they couldn't move up. So that's just how Buddha does things. Well, there's already 16 teams in the elite division. Mm. And it's like you'd have to play so many games to have the people come up from the bo- from the below. Give me some relegation out here, you know? Yeah, maybe. So wishing the best of luck to all the teams going to um, Devons. Super exciting uh, to have that tournament. I played it once, so it's fun. Um, lastly, to wrap up the news, we're going A-U-D-L. Everyone's favorite uh, semi-professional league uh, in Canada because only one. So uh, <laughs> by default, actually, my my favorite is not is not the AUL. My favorite is the PUL and the WUL, even though it's not in in Canada. It's still very exciting to watch. Yeah, Every, well, I'm, I'm I I said everyone's favorite in Canada because there's only one. We want to get a PUL team out here. I know. Did you see the WMA game that came into Toronto? Like it was crazy. So, so. Yeah, I have been approached by people in the WUL about starting a team in Vancouver. So 
Hey, then then that would be everyone's favorite semi-pro team. So there you go. Thank you. All right. So anyways, Toronto defeats Montreal again. Uh, they win 15-12. Ryan Pola's ball out, five assists, a goal, and a block. Uh, Kale Campbell leads the way from Montreal with three goals and an assist. Um, Toronto's now two and three. Montreal staring at an zero and three start and playing New York. So I hate to say this, but staring at an zero and four start out here. Uh, <laughs> New York's just that good. And then um, Toronto's on a bye. So enjoy your rest, Toronto. Toronto still kind of have a shot at the playoffs, uh, but they got to win some big games against uh, Boston and Philly, and especially their cross divisional matchups with uh, Pittsburgh and Detroit. So. We'll see what happens with them. That was a long news segment. I'm happy it is now finished because we can move into main event talking about college Nats, which we'll do right after this break. Hi, this is Carla DiFilippo, coach of the Toronto Sixers and co-founder of the Toronto Elites Junior Program. And you're listening to the Huckin' A podcast, your coast-to-coast guide for all things Canadian Ultimate. Welcome to the main event. We have our college nationals recap for the USA College Nationals 2023. We're going to kick it off with UVic. So obviously I was pretty excited that UVic was there. It was very exciting, but with the placement that they had, they kind of ended up being in a really tough pool for them to kind of upset into pre-quarters. So they were in the quote unquote pool of death, which has the number four seed, the number five seed, the number nine seed. And all of these teams that, that they had to try to get an upset from are not scrubby. Like they're they're good teams, they're athletic and they're deep. So Oregon at number nine, Tufts at number five, and and Vermont at number four. And I was able to watch quite a few of their games. And often with these teams, they were quite close until half, or they weren't close at the beginning and then traded. And so you can see that Uvic is like right on the doorstep of being able to compete with teams like this. They just need a little bit more experience. So it's pretty tough. They ended up dropping four games out of five at nationals, but None of them have ever played a national before, and they put up some really great scores against some really top teams. So they ended up finishing tied for 15th. But in exciting news, UVic won the Spirit Award at College Nationals, and this is, it's great. I didn't know. I just saw them all lining up in their jerseys, and I was like, why is UVic here? And I was like, oh, they won Spirit. Like, that's so awesome. Also, the amount of people that came up to me and said, oh, this is a good this is a good one in the books for Canadian spirit. What a Canadian team we think spirit. So um, thank you, Uvic, for helping uh, bring back our reputation a little bit. I think UBC was in the bottom half for spirit, but. Um, we'll skip over that part. Phys- no, no, it's <laughs> like I can talk about it. We are a physical team and we didn't get anything. I don't think we got bad points for anything other than we got a couple ones for fouls and body contact, but we were above 10. Hey, and. For those who don't know, ten like ten's like the normal. So um, it, it still bugs me because I I did hear uh, Danny. You might have heard this too when we were walking by the UVic players. Someone referenced twenty twelve again, and I was just like, come I on! Like I don't know if it was someone from Alter World, just like a, a heckler out there, or maybe a player. But I did hear it. Is all I'm saying. And I was like, come on! Like that was like these UVic players weren't even playing back then. Were they even born? Come on! Like, <laughs> like, like seriously, let it, let it die. <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah, like it's just. Anyways, congrats to you, Uvic. Um, you take down the Money Melons, which is um, that's a whole other vibe. They got the merch out there. A little too expensive for my blood, sick. but yeah, yeah. It, it was great to see Uvic there. Um, it was great to see my captain and teammate Trevor Nectel out there. Um, as a former Uvic coach, like he he drove out from Ontario to go and and support and help. Uh, so that was really cool to see as well. Uh, just a small group of Victoria's finest. Uh, balling out and uh, take a look at the, the stats here. There, there's some ballers on this UVic team. Come on. Yeah, we have Alicia Brawley with 18 assists um, and Abba with 10, Erica Edgel with eight, Monica with seven. Abba also had 15 goals, Erica Edgel, six, 10 goals. Like it was incredible um, individual performances by those players. It also shout out UVic. And UBC. I think anytime we were near each other, we were cheering for each other really loudly. So I think that, that that bond from regionals has not faded away. I think it's stronger than ever. And I really, there's something, my mind is kind of percolating with ideas of how to tap into this whole like Northwest love thing. So if you're a Northwest team, I might be sliding into your DMs. You know, like 
I know Toronto has the one with like their three main elite teams. Like you gotta have like a sun hoodie, like Northwest Love, and just have logo. Like, come on, you got some. There's some ideas out there. Yeah. Um. So more than that, so, but yeah. Oh, more. More than just swag. Okay, maybe I'll pitch it here because then if anybody has any ideas, they can slide yeah, into my DMs. Yeah, so, so uh, we're going to talk a little, about, a little bit about this later when we talk about UBC, but I want to create more pressure situations for the squad if I'm coaching next year and more high-level games because an issue we ran into is we would never played in a situation like that. It was pretty intense. And also we didn't have that many good games this year. And so trying to think of ways to challenge the squad and be able to actually like get certain players used to playing lots of minutes, et cetera. I want to get UW, Oregon and, and UBC, like the ones that were kind of like in the top, top 10 ish, let's say at nationals and their respective club teams to come to a tournament um, and play like all the club college teams can play all the club teams and then do like a showcase in front of a crowd to raise money for the teams going to college, like as a send off. Um, I don't know logistically how it would work with three teams needing to be in a showcase, um, but like the club players could like rotate. Um, it could be like a, a riot line and it could be a traffic line. It could be a schwa line in rotation in the game. Um, but I, I just want like the stadium atmosphere and like blasting music at them. What do you think of that idea? You need to not just blast um, music. You need to blast USA cheers. Okay. We're going to have ourselves because, uh, you know, there's a lot to talk about with that stadium, but to wrap up UVic, um, a good showing against Oregon regional rivals here, 14-11. So uh, as you mentioned, they were able to hang with some of these top teams and hopefully build for um, the future here. And so super fun to see them. Uh, we're just going to move on here to UBC. Uh, talk first about pool play. So I had the opportunity to, to commentate the, the Carlton game. So that was super fun. Um UBC had a big lead. The D lines were balling D one and D two out here, uh, and then Carlton made a little bit of a run. Got got a little bit. You know, maybe I don't know what happened there. We're not. We weren't D one and D two. By the way, it was just D. Two different types of D lines. Okay, sorry, I stand corrected. D one and D A balling out for uh, UBC getting points. Um, Lauren Holzman, like just like. Big shots. I was very impressed on the stream. I, I definitely commented on it. Carlton makes a little bit of a run, uh, but UBC does take it out, and um, UBC avenges the bad scheduling of uh, playing the top seed in the pool first. Um, I'm just going to leave it there. Um, then finish up with, uh, ooh, 15-3. Sorry, Chicago. Tough. Uh, then they play on Saturday, UT Dallas. Oof. Sorry, Whiplash. 15-2. Come on, look at these scores out here. And then, so here's the interesting game. So UCSB had just finished a game with Carlton uh, that I was doing with Field Pass, and UCSB lost after, I think, being up for a bit of it and, like, seeming to have the momentum. They were up till the end. Yeah. Carlton went break, and then it was, like, hold, hold. Yeah, Field, field Pass is a blur. Just saying, side note, watching four games at once, ADHD dream, because uh, I'm just like, oh, there's so much happening. Like, I think you would like it, Danny, because there's just so much action and you're trying to comment on all of it and you're like with the other people beside you pointing to the screen. Oh, it's so fun. Anywho, uh, UBC defeats UCSB 15-5. Was told um, they did not rest their starters, correct? Yeah. I, I, I also, you said that they said that they were throwing it in on that game. Well, that's that's the interview I had with them before their pre-quarter is all I'm saying. All right. Well, they, their starters played tons and were like laying out all over the place. Like, I if they were resting, that's a really funny way to rest. So, anywho, uh, they, they go. Uh, there's quarterfinals that happened, and UBC defeats. I'm trying to see the picture here. UBC defeats Tufts 15 11. Tufts was kind of hanging around from what I saw in Field Pass. Once again, there were multiple quarterfinals going on. Um, but uh, UBC does cruise out for the victory. And then we go into the semifinal, which was uh, hope I saw a lot of people sharing stories about watching it. So if you watched it uh, through USA Ultimate's means or some other means, I won't say how you did it, but if you watched it through those means, thank you for supporting UBC. Um, but unfortunately, you know, Danny, you're going to get more color. But the game goes 15-10. That's what I'm going to say. But Danny will add some color to this. 
Um, it's so hard to talk about, honestly. <laughs> um, it was, it was a, it was a great experience for our team collectively. I know from experience that playing in stadium games makes you like play within your own head and not in your body, like things that you would normally do, decisions you would normally make, things that are normally norm like easy become difficult. So it was a very tough situation for all of us, never having been there as a, as a team before. And everyone looked really good in warm up, And so there was no kind of indication to us coaches that people were nervous, but obviously they were, and you could see it on the field. You could see it when we're playing defense. You could see it when we're kind of trying to run our normal end zone and, and it's not happening. So I've since watched it back and I actually am quite proud of some of our offensive flow and some of our defensive pressure. It's just a little bit of finishing and that, that is related to kind of like the, the focus thing and, and the pressure kind of getting to people. Cause I think in general, I thought we were step in step with Colorado and I, I genuinely feel like we would have given a better final if we were in it. Um, and so it's a bit disappointing to not have been given that opportunity or to not have taken that opportunity rather, but there's a lot to learn. And with time, um, adventure is just uh, misery in retrospect. So uh, it was a good, it was a good adventure. Yeah. It, we, well, I had a chance to watch some of it uh, back with uh, the Danny Proby um, in the B and B we're staying at in Detroit. So that was fun. So shout out to the was B. Was it fun? Well, it was fun to spend time with you. I don't know if it was fun to, to rewatch some of it, but um, for context, Theo came around the corner and I'm crying. <laughs> that did happen after the game. <laughs> no, no, I, I had to stop it at half. So basically for all of you that didn't watch it, the ESPN interviews the winning coach and then the losing coach or the coach who's losing. And so I was, I had an ESPN interview with Ian Toner in the middle and I hadn't seen it yet. And I'm just watching it and I'm not, I'm, I'm emotional watching the game anyway. But then I sent the clip of it to my sister's chat. And my sister said, like, this would have made dad more proud than anything, like, ever. Because my dad was just, like, such an ESPN sports nut. Like, to have seen his daughter be on ESPN, I think, would have been a really cool thing. And so as soon as my sister said that, I was just, like, a wreck. And then Theo walks into the room and is like, what is happening? Why are you crying? Yeah, I'm, I'm learning about uh, gaining emotional intelligence and uh, working through, uh, um, you know, when people are crying, how do I, how do I help? So he sat there and then he put his hand on my shoulder and it's like, tap, 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 but he didn't try to fix was it. Was that helpful? Honestly, you can say it wasn't, that's fine. You don't need to like tapping the person's shoulder. I don't know, maybe, but like just physically being there is fine. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, um, we, I hinted at that. I'll give you a seven out of 10. <laughs> hey, I'll take that better than five. Um, I talked about the vibe earlier. So, um, I, I think you could hear this in the broadcast, but whenever, I was talking to the Alter World people. I was doing stats on the field. Um, sh shout out to Jake Lethrin for referencing my socks and sandals on the stream. Uh, that, was, that was pretty funny. Anyways, um, they were saying they were chanting USA because of Stacey Gaskell, who's an Olympian. I'm convinced that's not true. I'm convinced they were just chanting USA because it was a Canadian team. So whenever Colorado would score, there were a lot of USA chants. And I, I looked to the, I think, four parents. You can clarify how many parents were there from UBC, but looked at the parents and I was like, it's UBC versus the world. And they're all like laughing. And I was like getting, getting a little, little, little pumped up for you guys. Um, so th that was uh, cool to see. Um, then UVic, Oregon, there were signs for UBC. There was chanting. So it was kind of cool to see the contrast of crowd. Um, I will say the lights as well, even just doing stats for that game. Um, kind of, kind of hard to see. Yeah, we, we've talked about this game and dissected so many things about it. And a lot of my players, when I'm asking them like why they didn't throw to people who were open right in front of them, they said all they were seeing is they'd look up and they'd see a white jersey and they couldn't see how far away that white jersey was from the dark jersey. And the dark jerseys were our team. And I was like, oh, I didn't really think about like the light and the color of the jersey being an issue. And I didn't think much of it. But then I mentioned it when I was in the Ultra World tent uh, the next morning and they're like, it was hard to see. Like we were yeah. talking about how it was a disadvantage to be the dark team. And like, we did have drops too. And so I don't know if those are related to like having a hard time seeing but the light lighting was not good. We also couldn't hear on the field at all. Like 
when I was on the sideline with you, Dio, during the finals, players could actually talk to each other on the field. Sideline was actually talking to players on the field. The coach could could talk to the observer. Like you could hear people and you couldn't. Like Robbie Brennan's voice really cuts through and he he's can be quite loud in his accent. You can really hear it on a women's ultimate field. He couldn't even get the observer's attention. He couldn't talk to somebody on the field. So it was like impossible. And so next year, will I practice where we're not allowed to talk to each other? Absolutely. There's some things that like I, I didn't prepare for. Yeah. Or just like, we're not, you're actually not allowed to use voice amplification at these tournaments. So um, that would have been illegal, but it was actually tough because if you watch the stream, we actually finished out a point with six players because Mika Kurhashi went off with a cramp. And so I'm dealing with her and the cramp and then she goes off in the field and I'm walking off looking at who I want to sub on the disc is being tapped in basically. And we're screaming at the observer. We're like, we didn't substitute anybody. You didn't ask the other team to substitute anybody. Like what is happening? And the observer looked at Robbie and he just shrugged. And then we scored with six players. It was very strange. And then it happened another time where we were trying to injury sub somebody. The observer just like, wasn't listening to us. We're like trying to get their attention, like screaming. And so we didn't like, I think somebody on Colorado went down and we wanted to make a sub. That's part of the rules. And and they didn't make that mistake in finals. I saw them actually asking in finals, but the whole atmosphere was just like things were strange that night, to be fair. Things were very strange. And full moon, maybe, or something. Full moon. We had a lot of like really great individual performances, a lot of great things that we learned. Um, but it was tough. It was honestly the like toughest sport experience of my life. Mm. I did see Instagram post about that as well. So thank you for sharing. Um, I want to shout out Matty Ong, uh, led the team with 12 assists, but also uh, being a Callahan finalist and seeing yeah. uh, her up there was really cool. Um, Abby Hecko does win. Um, so I guess shout out to Nathan Kalakovic because you helped make the video. So um, he'll get like a piece of the Callahan for that uh, fellow Canadian out there. Fun to see uh, Canadian videographers, uh, Christian Flores as well there at the tournament. Anna Gadu finishes with the team lead, 13 goals, Kurohashi, 8, and Helena Trombley, D-line, right? Seven goals on the D-line? Let's go. I mean, our D-line played a lot this tournament. Uh, I mean, when you win two pool play games by a combined 15-5, uh, you expect your D-line to be out there. So, um, Danny, I want to say thank you for spending time with me in the finals. That was super fun to watch the finals, be on the sideline. Um, our iPads were overheating because they were, like, super old. Um, Keith and Charlie, you need to get newer iPads. What I'm is basically what I'm saying to you. Um, so the, the first point of the men's final, the iPad overheats. We have to run back and kind of like let it deheat. So we end up getting bags of ice, putting them on the iPads. And Danny's the, the biggest trooper out here, has the umbrella. So it looks like she's like making me a celebrity, but really she's trying to cover the iPad and like also hit it with some ice. So kudos to you. Yeah, it was funny because my team could see me across the field and they're like, why is Danny just on the sideline of final spinning an umbrella? <laughs> like I was working, sort of. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. And, and you got to be on the pregame show too. Um, so yeah. that was pretty fun um, to get on, on Deep Look for a second time now. Uh, you know. And I got to meet Lindsay Sue in person oh, yes. who edits yes. our podcast. Shout out, Lindsay. You're cool. Let's be friends. Sue's a goat for sure. And uh, is a is a big time editor for us. So that wraps up college. I'm hoping to see some of these players. I know um, some of them will be on on traffic and red flag and and other teams. So expecting big things from the West Coast. And once again, this is our reminder to do what, Danny, for uh, college teams. What are we reminding them to do? Come on. Like, like people literally take extra courses in university just to extend their college. Like they spend so much money to not only play, but they spend even more money to take like random courses to use all of their eligibility. They wouldn't do that if it wasn't epic, if it wasn't amazing, if it wasn't the best thing that they've ever done with their lives. So if you haven't played in the USA circuit and you have a good team, like you are genuinely missing out on an experience that you will really enjoy. So Metro East, baby, come on. Cornell did not do that well. I know you can do it in Metro East teams. Binghamton actually did well, so I will give a shout out. They did do well. Uh, they got a big first victory, too. That was huge. Jolie Krabs, baller. Um, so, yeah, just being there, it's a unique experience. The You've been at Club Nats, obviously, Danny. It's a different vibe, though. Like, College Nats is something else. Like, the parents out here with – I said this last year. I can say this for both D3 and D1. Parents out here with the spreads, you know, they got – depending on the program, of course, but – they got all the, the food out here. They're making sure players are hydrated, sunscreen. They're following them. Um, 
you know, during pre quarterfinals, one game's a vibe, so everyone's huddling there. That game ends, so everyone's like running from one field to the next to watch the next like game that's still going on. You just don't get that anywhere else. It is true. And I think that it's also just like, it's just fun having a bunch of young people who are not like, are sometimes volatile on the field. So it makes the games exciting. Like teams that should win don't. And like a lot of that happens. But then at the end of the day, it still is UNC Colorado in the final in the women's division. So like all these upsets and close to upsets can happen, but we still kind of write the same story. But how we get there is is quite different. I want to do one final shout out or one final story. Actually, maybe I'll save this for subs only. Hmm. I'll save it for subs only. Or now? Just just say now. Subs only, we're going to talk about a trip. Unless that's part of our trip. Okay, so it's on the flight to now. Oh, yeah, yeah, show this. <laughs> I'm sitting with one of my athletes, and I have the window seat, and my athlete has the, the aisle seat, and we get to our seat, and there's somebody sitting in the middle. I'm like, oh, okay. I feel bad because Jenilyn and I both, sorry, it's Jenilyn. Jenilyn and I, and both and I like talking, and so we're like, oh, maybe we'll be talking over this person. <laughs> It'll be pretty annoying, but we get our seats. And I see this person's like lock screen and it's clearly a Frisbee person based on kind of like the little picture that they have. And I'm like, Oh, what team are you from? Cause we were in the Tex or sorry, the Dallas airport. And then this player plays for Texas. Turns out they're quite a good player. Theo, you know who that is? John Clyde. John Clyde's a John good player. Clyde. He's a, uh, yeah, I, I, unfortunately Texas lost to UMass in the, in the quarters there, but he's a baller. And so you were sitting with some uh, Texas Frisbee royalty out here. Yeah, and so I was, like, trying to, like, get the conversation rolling between the two of them because I think the college is fun when you make friends from other teams. And they ended up chatting the whole time, and now they're friends, and I love that so much. And it's just very much, like, that's, like, the vibe of college. We we went out um, the last night, like, the UBC players. Like, we went just to drop them off, basically. But all the college teams are like, UBC, we love you, especially with a couple um, – days away from having to like take care of their bodies as much and not playing as much now they're all like hanging out and having a good time now all like the love bombing happening so like all the northwest teams are like oh we love you blah, blah, blah. it's very cute so you don't get that in club at all but in college they're like all such fans of each other it's it's awesome yeah the, i mean there are tears being shed by teams when they lose i uh calling the the ucsb carlton pre-quarter and UCSB like sat there for an hour after doing a circle because their season's done. And for some of them, their careers are done. And it's just not something you get in club. You can always run it back in club, but college, you have a finite amount of time. So, Stanford, you mean? Oh, what did I say? Carlton, but it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, yeah. UCSB Stanford pre quarter. That is correct. Um, it's all a blur now. Uh, that was the Yeah, I'm sure. So, anywho. Um, that wraps up our show for today. Follow us on socials. Um, you would have seen an AMA. Um, that's not archived. I guess we could archive that if you want to watch it again. That was super fun. Um, we're going to talk uh, Mixed Eastern's recap next week. Jazz Fest preview, uh, open and women's tournament there in Quebec. They tried to do a mixed tournament, but I don't think it got much traction. So any final thoughts, Danny, before we head to subs only, where we talk about our trip, share some uh, cool nuggets for the subscribers. No, I do want to apologize for my vocal fry and my bad audio. I'm in a hotel in Brampton with air conditioning. I cannot live without the air conditioning. So I know I usually have a vocal fry because I've usually just come from a tournament and I've been screaming, but I think it's extra bad right now. So thank you if you've made it this far. I, I didn't notice it too much, but I, I did notice when I was walking by some college kids, like they were trying to talk like, hey, come to the party tonight. And I'm like, oh man, you've been screaming all weekend. And I love it, but you could tell they were their vo their vocal cords were just done after shouting for like three days. Yeah, yeah, it's a good time, it's a good time. But yeah, thank you everybody for listening, and we will see you in the subscriber only section or next week.